This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Home to the tallest peak in the contiguous United States and the largest trees in the world, Sequoia National Park is one of America's greatest treasures. Established in 1890, Sequoia National Park protects over 400,000 acres of land, including landmarks like Mount Whitney, Morro Rock, and of course, the giant sequoia trees. It's one of 21 national parks in the U.S. designated by the United Nations as a biosphere reserve and is the second oldest national park in the country. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. This is the National Parks Explored, Episode 2, Sequoia. This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, the best place to find and watch documentaries about science, history, technology, nature, travel, and so much more. CuriosityStream has exclusive, award-winning films and shows that you can't watch anywhere else, plus the deepest collection of the best documentaries from around the world, deeper than any other streaming service out there. CuriosityStream adds new shows every week and is one of the very best deals in streaming. I actually personally used CuriosityStream well before this sponsorship. I'm a big fan of documentaries, that's why I enjoy making long-form content on YouTube. And if you enjoy this channel, I know you'll love the kind of films that are available on CuriosityStream. You can find high-quality documentaries on geography, culture, history, or any topics that interest you, such as science, technology, or music, and it's much more affordable than other streaming services. I recently enjoyed watching a new film they released called The Secret City. It tells the fascinating story of the city of Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which was built in secret to help with the construction of the nuclear bomb. If you enjoy my channel, I know you'll love this and any of the shows CuriosityStream has to offer. Even better, you can watch it on any of your devices, whether it's your laptop, TV, or mobile phone. Go to curiositystream.com slash TII or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And for my fans, use promo code TII and you will save 25% off. It's already one of the most affordable and best deals in streaming. So click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash TII and save 25% right now. Once again, as there can sometimes be some confusion, the National Park Service administers hundreds of units, but only 63 are considered fully-fledged national parks. When I use the term in this video, I'm referring to these 63, not everything in the entire National Park Service system. While Sequoia isn't the largest park at 400,000 acres or the most visited at 1 million annual guests, it is the second oldest in the nation. Established on September 25, 1890, 18 years after Yellowstone, Sequoia National Park was the second ever established in the United States, located along the Sierra Nevada mountain chain in California. The park protects the giant Sequoia forests, including the largest tree by volume, the famed General Sherman Tree, Mount Whitney, the tallest peak in the contiguous United States at 14,505 feet or 4,421 meters above sea level, and countless other ecosystems and geological features. The United Nations designated Sequoia and Kings Canyon Parks as a biosphere reserve in 1976, but unlike Yellowstone, Sequoia Kings Canyon isn't considered a World Heritage Site. While the Sequoia Forest was originally designated as a national park in 1890, a stretch of mountains to the north was set aside in 1940 as Kings Canyon National Park. As both parks are right next to each other and protect similar landscapes and wildlife, both areas are administered by the National Park Service together. Kings Canyon and the Sequoias operate as a single entity despite historically being two separate national parks, and if the series continues, I'll have a video down the line about Kings Canyon and its history. To avoid confusion, I'll only be referring to the Sequoia National Park in this video, even though both parks are jointly administered. Sequoia National Park is located in East Central California, along the Sierra Nevada mountain chain in Tulare County. Most visitors travel to the park via the southern entrance and stay in the town of Three Rivers while the closest city is Visalia in California's Central Valley. The park consists of many diverse ecosystems and climate types, climbing from the foothills of the Sierras at 1,505 feet to the peak of Mount Whitney at 14,505 feet. Most of the park is backcountry. No roads cross the Sierra Nevada mountains within the park's boundaries, and much of the park can only be reached by trail, which many people do. Another national park, Kings Canyon, lies directly to the north, and as much of the two parks' infrastructure is shared and integrated, it's very easy to visit both parks in a single trip, which many people do. The park, its valleys, canyons, and mountainsides covered in forests, is dominated by high peaks, home to not only Mount Whitney, but a number of other massive peaks, part of the tallest alpine section of the mountain range, which is often known as the High Sierra. Most of the park's eastern boundary is the ridgeline of the Sierra Nevada, so the watershed of the Owens River on the other side of the mountains doesn't lie within the park. 
Sitting on the western slopes, its water feeds tributaries of the Cahuilla, Kern, and Thule rivers, which feed the Central Valley's Tulare Lake Bed, occasionally making their way to the San Joaquin River in the ocean during floods. Encompassing a cross-section of the Sierra Nevada, Sequoia National Park is teeming with a diverse array of wildlife. In the lower regions of the front country, you can find bobcats, foxes, ground squirrels, rattlesnakes, and mule deer, and occasionally people have seen mountain lions and Pacific fishers, a weasel and mink-like mammal. The last of California's most famous animals, the California grizzly bear, which is on the state flag, was killed within the park's boundaries in 1922, making them extinct in the state. If you visit higher elevations of the park, you can find mule deer, douglas squirrels, and another less dangerous species of bear, the American black bear. The sequoias have even more animals within the park's 400,000 acre boundaries, ranging from coyotes to woodpeckers, owls and opossums, beavers, and even turtles. The Sierra Nevada are a relatively young mountain range, estimated to be around 10 million years old. Even in this relatively brief time, they've experienced four ice ages, during which thick layers of ice blanketed the mountains, glaciers formed, carving deep valleys, and creating rugged peaks. Most of the mountains and canyons in the Sierra Nevada are composed of granitic rocks, and in the extensive history of glaciation, coupled with the erosion-resistant nature of these rocks, has shaped many of Sequoia Park's striking features. The Great Western Divide contains many of Sequoia's most notable geological landmarks, such as Mineral King, a valley that attracted silver miners and was almost bought by Disney for the construction of a ski resort, more on that later. Moro Rock, a large granite dome that overlooks the park, is another notable feature, and of course, Mount Whitney is second only to the Sequoia trees themselves. While many are unaware, Sequoia National Park also features extensive cave systems. The park boasts over 270 known caves, including California's longest cave, Lyburn, which spans nearly 17 miles of surveyed passages. Crystal Cave, the park's second longest cave, spanning over 3.4 miles, is the only commercial cave open to visitors. Most of the caves are formed from marble and found in the middle and lower elevations. However, some caves, such as those used for silver mining and mineral king, can be found at elevations as high as 10,000 feet. The Sequoia Giant Forest, the epicenter of the park, has a fascinating history stretching back over a thousand years. Native people lived there as early as 1000 CE. The Menachi tribe resided around the Cahuilla River to as high in the mountains as the giant forests. Local tribes would migrate to the giant forest during different parts of the year and tend to the sequoia trees in the surrounding ecosystem, acting as the first custodians of the land long before settlement by Europeans. The first non-native settler to homestead in the sequoias was Hale Tharp, who arrived in the sequoias in 1858 with other settlers to follow in 1860. He built Tharp's Log, a home within the hollowed out trunk of a giant sequoia tree which is still there to this day and is a short stroll away from General Sherman Tree in the central area of the giant forest. Shortly after Tharp's arrival, epidemics of smallpox, measles, and scarlet fever brought by settlers from the eastern US, as well as violence at the hands of the settlers themselves, killed many of the native people in the region. Tharp and other settlers continued the protection of the sequoias in partnership with John Muir, who paid frequent visits to Tharp's cabin. The story of the national parks is one that cannot be told in full without recognizing John Muir and his Sierra Club's influence on preservationism. While many are familiar with his role in founding Yosemite and the role of the Sierra Club in the formation of the national park system, which we'll discuss more in detail in the next video, Muir still played an active role in establishing Sequoia National Park. In fact, the Sequoias were established only 11 days before Yosemite, and the story of California's first two national parks are closely intertwined. John Muir and Hale Tharp both led many of the early preservationist efforts against the logging of the giant sequoia trees, and their advocacy led President Benjamin Harrison to establish the sequoias as America's second national park on September 25, 1890. As the sequoias predated the establishment of the National Park Service, U.S. Army cavalry troops were sent to protect the giant forest under the leadership of General Charles Young, the first black military superintendent, until the National Park Service took over management in 1916. The expansion of the park continued over the years due to the advocacy of Susan Thu in 1926, which involved the construction of the General's Highway, greatly increasing visitorship. In 1932, during the Great Depression, the Civilian Conservation Corps constructed the High Sierra Trail, which connected the giant forest to Mount Whitney. In 1940, FDR created the Kings Canyon National Park, previously General Grant National Park, beginning the joint administration of Sequoia and Kings Canyon Parks as one. In the 1960s, the Walt Disney Corporation had plans to build what would have been the largest ski resort in California 
in the Mineral King Valley, just outside the park's boundaries at the time. The resulting legal battle between Disney and the Sierra Club could warrant a video of its own, but the Sierra Club eventually won out, and in 1978, due to an act of Congress, Mineral King was incorporated into the park. The Sequoias featured many popular attractions, including the Sherman Tree Trail, a paved path that covers 0.8 miles round trip, taking visitors through Tharps Log into the general Sherman Tree. Tunnel Log allows visitors to drive through a fallen sequoia tree on Crescent Meadow Road in the Giant Forest, and it is one of the most common activities. Morrow Rock, mentioned earlier, is situated in the park center and can be climbed via a 351 step stairway to a breathtaking panoramic view of Sequoia. The park also offers various campgrounds, including Potwisha, Buckeye Flat, and South Fork in the lower elevations, and Atwell Mill, Cold Springs, Lodgepole, and Dorst Creek in the higher elevations. Now for what you are all here for and what brings most people to Sequoia National Park, the giant sequoia trees themselves. The largest single stem trees in the world. The Sequoia Giant Forest features 5 out of the 10 largest trees on the planet. The General Sherman Tree is the largest by volume in the world, and the General Grant Tree in Kings Canyon is the widest tree in the world. The tallest tree in the world is not a sequoia, but is instead a redwood named Hyperion, which we'll feature in a later video on Redwood National Park. Sequoias are able to achieve such incredible heights and sizes through a fascinating combination of factors. Their advanced survival systems, which include an incredibly thick and fibrous bark, which prevents fire, insects, and disease from harming the tree, along with an extensive root system that taps in the waterbeds, allows for fast growth and an incredibly long life. Sequoia trees are also some of the oldest in the world, averaging over 1,500 years old, six times older than the United States itself. The General Sherman tree sports a base 36 and a half feet wide, a circumference of 103 feet, a volume of 52,500 cubic feet, and a weight of 1,385 tons, as heavy as 200 male elephants. However, General Sherman is only the largest tree currently living. Other trees like General Noble, which stood at 300 feet tall, were much larger but were cut down in the past century. According to records, there were many giant sequoias that surpassed the size of General Sherman and Grant. Who knows quite how large some of them could have been. That's it for this video. I don't want to commit to covering each of the 63 national parks in the country quite yet because I'm still not done with my series on each of the states, the US explained, but if you guys enjoy the national parks explored, I'll keep making more. Next, we move up the Sierra Nevadas to the world famous Yosemite National Park. If you spent time in Yosemite and have anything you want me to include, leave a comment and let me know. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's already joined my Patreon. Through it, you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, and shout outs to my videos. Please be sure to check out the TII store where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official that is interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks, laptop stickers and sleeves, and so on. I really appreciate the over 900 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information and suggestions for future videos. It's a great community, and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.